grand chatting, chaos for the fly, album review, let's chat about it. Hey friends, what's going on? John Everwood spinning here tonight to chat about this latest album, and I should say, a uh, solo debut of Green Chatton of Fontaine's DC fame. He is a singer, songwriter, and the frontman of group, and you know, if you don't know Fontaine's DC over the last few years, uh, they have become one of the most, I'd say, unstoppable forces in modern punk rock between their debut dog roll and a Hero's Death and Skinty Fia as well. Uh, these are three of the most well-written, well-performed, and just thinking man's punk albums uh, that have come out in quite some time. Now, I did not know what to expect from this album leading up to it, especially when I first started hearing uh, the singles, which were very clearly going in a more folk direction, which, you know, is certainly interesting. I didn't know what the whole album was going to sound like, though, and if I had enjoyed it. But I will say this, uh, for a solo debut, uh, Grian sounds absolutely um, very comfortable out on its own. This album starts off with the score, and I mean, I've loved this since it dropped as a single. The very dense, dark atmosphere of this track is nothing short of infectious. It's brooding, it's quiet, it's very intense for a folk track. It's got that airiness to it, it's very light on the ears, but it's also, like I said, very dark, very gritty. I mean, between the pacing, just how deathly quiet it comes off at times, and Green's very, very somber performance. It's got a hell of a backbone. And the electronic elements that pop in in the second half, I mean, I wouldn't say they're 100% necessary, but they go over well. It really does set the tone for this album perfectly, honestly. Then we have Last Time Forever. Then we have Last Time Every Time Forever, which was one of the later singles dropped here. And you know what? It's also grown on me quite a bit since the first time I heard it. This is another very grim, very emotional, very dark and dreary ballad. I mean, there is an immense sadness behind this track. Green's uh, vocal performance on this track is so exhausted, so defeated. I mean, it's very different than his usual very fired up and very intense and wordy performances that we're used to hearing in Fontaine's. And the pacing on this track, once again, the pacing on a lot of these tracks, it's not going to be as instantaneous as you'd expect. You really do have to sit with these. It's so effective, and I love the instrumental to this track. It really does create a very great, very sturdy bridge between just how beautiful this track gets at times, and once again, how dreary and emotional it gets. And Fairly's is nothing short of gold. It was the first track that I've heard here. It has grown on me every day since, basically. And honestly, I think it's the best track on the entire album. It's probably the most straightforward uh, folk and folk rock track on this album, but it definitely has a little grit to it. It's got a little subtle darkness to it. Maybe not like gothy kind of darkness, but a very intense, very real darkness. I love the vocals on the chorus especially just because of how hurt they come off but just how quiet Green gets for the verses here. Uh, it's a hell of a track and probably one of the best indie cuts I've heard all year. Yeah, overall, I think for like a first offering uh, from a frontman of a punk group, uh, this album is honestly exceeding a lot of my expectations. You know, plenty of punk frontmen go out on their own and put out some albums, but it usually does take them a little while to get their footing, but Grant actually sounds really comfortable. I mean, obviously, there are some growing pains on this album. East Coast Bed, for example. This is easily the worst track here. I don't know, me personally, I'm not as into the sort of weirdo, sort of psychedelic instrumental that we get here, even though on paper that sounds great. This just brings things down and makes everything sound really awkward. And I feel like after that, everything else about this track falls apart. The pacing, especially, I mean, this has been a very meticulously paced album so far, but then this track sounds like it's, God, like pulling teeth. And it's also the longest track here uh, by quite a margin. And Green, honestly, on these vocals, sounds asleep. I do like the trumpet, though. That's actually pretty classy. I don't know. Deep down, there's a good track here, but I'm just not feeling it. And Season for Pain, at least as far as I'm concerned, is a letdown as far as the finale goes. It's still very gloomy, very dreary. I do still love the atmosphere here. But of all Green's uh, performances on this album, truthfully, this is his weakest. His lyrics here, especially, I, I'm shocked at the sheer amount of cliches that we get. 
And you know what? Instrumentally, it does tease that it's going to get a little heavier, a little grittier at times. It does not pay off. This just, it's not a very good finale. Plus, uh, the final moments are really kind of awkward. That whole last minute did not need to be there. Outside of that, though, this is a really enjoyable first outing from Grid, and I actually can't wait to see what he does next. Bob's Casino? What even is this track? This is a swanky, classy lounge tune that is backed by some very soulful strings and some even more soulful backup singers. I don't know what this is or where it came from, but I am all for it. Uh, the massively depressive vocals of this album, though, continue to reign supreme and bring this very sunny, very swanky track down a few pegs. It makes for a pretty interesting duality, though. I really am very excited to see what Grian does next on his own. And on a very somber album, all of the people is easily uh, the most just harrowing, just deeply depressive track here. I mean, this track is nothing but Grian and his piano, which, from a distance, maybe sounds like a big risk, a little out of his wheelhouse, but it goes over really well. This absolutely harrowing ballad in its own way becomes absolutely gorgeous by the end of it. From a lyrical stance, I'm nothing short of impressed here, and Grian's vocal performance, while still very deeply depressed and very somber, um, is nothing short of beautiful. It's so sincere, it's immaculate. I don't have a lot of bad things to say about it. Salt Throwers Off a Truck late into the album just has this overt, upbeat joyousness to it as, as long as you don't look into those lyrics. And you know what? Some people might absolutely hate that. This is easily the most indie folk sounding thing here. But something about that and the more sort of traditional vocals we get from Green on this track, it makes it work. It's really charming. As a matter of fact, I could see this, I don't know, being a stripped down finale to the next Fontaine's DC album. And I am so far. We're pretty late into this album and this is one of the dreariest and exhausted sounding tracks here. It's bluesy, it's got some drama, and Green on vocals sounds like mentally just worn out in the best way. And this track has some of his most poetic lyrics. I love it. I love the gritty bluesy guitars that pop in as well. This, to me, should have been the finale to this album. I think it's a much better track than what we ended up getting. Overall, this is a very solid album from Green as far as his solo debut goes. Like I said, you know, plenty of punk front men step, on their, step out on their own, but a lot of them put out little folk records like this. But this, you know, the surprising thing here is just how comfortable Green chatting sounds. A, and B, the guy's got his head on straight. He knows what he wants to do on his own, and that's not usually the case, you know, right off the bat. It usually, you know, takes them an album or two, but this is very, very solid, and I can't wait to see what he does next. I'm feeling a very strong seven on this album, but let me know what you all think down below. If you like the video, be sure to give us a like, give us a subscribe, and let me know down below what you would like for me to chat about in the future. And until next time, have a great day, friends.